it's had a bloody good rain today, which is really, really good. Um, over the weekend, I bought some new plants I want to show you. I found a lovely little nursery, um, family-run nursery, tiny, and they grow all their own plants. This beautiful euphorbia, um, euphorbia purpurea. It's so nice. Look at the colour on it. And it has apple green flowers, which are, give a nice contrast. Um, there's this little vinca that I got off my mother. It's a white vinca, which is really nice. Some apple mint. This smell is absolutely divine. And new nephophia, because my last one pegged it. Uh, this is Percy's Pride. And finally, a magnolia. I've been looking for magnolia for ages. This is Grandiflora. And it's a beautiful specimen that I'm going to be growing on in a pot and I will finally put it up at the farm to create a huge tree. It's gorgeous. Okay folks, so update on the spring spinach bed. And I can tell you it's an epic fail. Uh, the chickens got in, as you remembered, and they ate off all the stems and I transplanted them back. Well, the problem is what is coming back now, as you can see here, is just going to seed immediately. This one you can see, you can see in here, that is bolting. Um, so I'm going to have to rip them all out and because it gets really really hot here in the summer these will not survive, uh, they'll bolt immediately if I sow more so I'll have to now wait till I've got an autumn harvest and I'll use this for salads instead. The spinach I did last Monday though I, has come back really well. So I've got some spinach, just not an entire bed's worth. Well today I am sorting out the beetroot. So these are the first beetroot that I sowed. And they're looking very, very nice. Now these are Manita, so they actually only grow one um, plant per seed. But you can see I've got a few gaps. So the final one is here and then I've got the next one's there. So I need to put a few more in. Um, but also my red ace is starting to come up, as is my Chiogia pink. And you can see that these are coming out more plants per seed. However, this year I am going to try the Charles Dowding method of letting everything grow. And then you just uh, twist off the beets when they're ready to come. But I've got a few gaps because a cat or a dog or something dug over this after I put the seeds in. So I'm just sowing some more beets today just to fill in all these little gaps. Well, I thought I'd give you a quick update on the dahlias. Uh, these ones have taken a while to get going. Um, you can see here, this has only got a tiny little nub in, as is this one. And this has got nothing at all so far on top. But they are going slowly. Um, maybe there were slightly smaller tubers, I'm not sure. Because the two big tubers are here. And they have done really, really well. So much so, they've actually had to just cut the tops off. So I did that, what, a couple of days ago and you could already see there's new shoots coming out. And that will just make a nicer bushier plant. Um, actually our frosts are probably over now so I can actually start thinking about popping these out which will be good because I have a crammed greenhouse full of stuff and I'm well ready to get plants outside. Well today I am transplanting um, salad bowl red lettuce outside. The last frosts uh, for the southeast of England have probably gone. So I'm taking a risk because I have an aphid infestation in the greenhouse and I'm more worried about these getting sucked to death by aphids than I am about frost. And if a frost does come along, I will run out that night and cover them with a blanket, but they should be fine. Um, so I'll keep these watered for the next few days they will very quickly perk up they always look rather floppy when they first go in and now I'm going to sort out my beets so the incubator is going on again today um, so the last hatch I did was kind of a test hatch just to work out how these new incubators were going to go and it was really successful so I am putting in uh, 12 13 Danver eggs, Barber Danver eggs, they're a lovely little Belgian bantam um, and they're one of my pure breed varieties that I do here. Um, these are actually 10 egg incubators because Barber Danver eggs are tiny 
tiny, tiny, uh, you can get 12 in and I'm just actually showing an extra one on the end. Um, so I'm gonna candle on day four because the idea is this will be my Danver hatch for myself to rear up some um, pullets and cockles for sale. And then I'm gonna start selling some hatching eggs. So I just need to make sure I've got a good fertility. Um, I'm doing a dry hatch, so I won't put any water in these until lockdown. But for now, off they go. Happy Sunday. So rather rude awakening this morning, 5.30 a.m., roll out of bed, butt naked, pull trousers on, rush down garden because the chickens are making a crazy noise. Now, I'm quite lucky in that these hens get locked away in this shed, so they are fox safe. However, these guys are, well, I've, I've just taken it for granted, really. So Barry comes in, and I'm sure if Barry was here, he would have attacked the fox. Um, but the fox obviously went a bit crazy in here because you can see down there, there's some feathers right there. I normally leave this doorway open. I'm gonna have to start shutting it. And then over here with, Eddie and his woman. Now Eddie comes in at night um, because again he crows so Eddie and Barry are out but she was going crazy and this door was half open. So I know there are foxes here but I need to be more fox safe and I'm gonna have to start shutting everybody away because I don't want my babies being eaten.